doctor came out to see Jem on the Friday afternoon. Um, it was around 12 o'clock. He had a look at him, the doctor, and he said, yes, you've got an infection. I'm going to give you some antibiotics. About seven o'clock in the morning, um, Jem called me to go into, his, into the bedroom and he said, I'm cold. And I said, OK, I'll go and get your water bottle on. I said, how do you feel it? He said, well, I don't feel sick anymore. Um, but I just noticed that his lips were very blue and cracked. Still didn't think it was anything bad. Still didn't think it was meningitis or sepsis because I didn't even know what sepsis was. Um, so I thought, hmm, he must be really dehydrated. So I thought, I'm gonna have to ring for an ambulance. I'd never ever phoned for an ambulance before in my whole life. I even apologized to them on the telephone. I said, I'm really sorry for wasting your time. I said, my husband's had an operation. And I said, I think he's dehydrated. I said, um, I, you know, he needs to go into hospital. And they said, okay, we'll be around as soon as we can. Jem was one of the first patients I treated as a newly appointed consultant. But what I remember most clearly was how Jem looked. I could tell Jem was near death. His skin was pale, his skin was mottled, his lips had a bluish discoloration. It was very clear from the outset that Jem was very, very likely to die. And about five minutes later, a lady doctor came in and said, his heart has stopped, we're doing all that we can. And we just looked at each other and I just began to cry then because I thought, no, he's dehydrated. You know, why does his heart need to stop? So that day I took Karen to the relative's room to speak to her about this terrible illness that was about to claim her husband's life. And that she was going to have to go home and tell their two young children that daddy wasn't coming home. Um... But then they said, he's going to be brain damaged. And I said, how am brain damaged? And they said, he probably wouldn't recognise the children. As I said, the decision was made to turn the machine off. So at 10 past four on the Tuesday, um, the nurses unplugged the machine. They took the bleeping noise off so that we didn't like, have a countdown. And then when he died, they just came into the room and just said, he's gone. Sepsis is dangerous for two reasons. It's dangerous because of the speed with which it progresses, and it's dangerous because it's often not picked up quickly enough. It was just awful. It was just the most horrible thing to have to go through, and I just don't want other families to have to go through that if they don't have to. And that's why I do want to make a difference. I want to make a change. I'm passionate about it. And I want to make a change. I want to raise awareness. I want people to know what sepsis is and how dangerous it is and how severe it is. You know, 37,000 people die from sepsis in this country a year. And if I can do my little bit, if I can help, then that's what I want to do. Thank you.